All right, so we are going to now see how oxygen goes from the air in the lungs into the capillaries. In this picture, this is showing you a little corner of an alveolus, okay? This is a little uh, corner of that little balloon that I talked about. And these represent the squamous epithelial cells, the really, really flat epithelial cells. This is a capillary. I know it doesn't look like blood here. I don't have any of the blood cells here. Let's pretend there is just plasma, okay? And plasma is not red. So that's why it's like this. So here you have alveolus, here you have blood plasma, and let's say I have 16 oxygen molecules in my alveolus, okay? These white buttons represent 16 oxygen molecules. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so I have 16 here. Um, remember the principles of concentration gradient. Things go from high concentration to low concentration, down the concentration gradient until there is equilibrium. So I have 16 here, I have zero here. So it'll keep moving into the blood, just down the concentration gradient until there is equilibrium. Okay, now I have eight here and eight here. So no more oxygen will move. But my body needs a lot more oxygen. The more oxygen I have, the more cellular respiration I can do. So here we have arrived at equilibrium, so movement will stop. But I want to have the concentration gradient. So that's where the red blood cell in the hemoglobin comes in. So let's pretend this is a red blood cell. There are many red blood cells, but let's just work with one right now to make things simple. So I have eight in the plasma, zero in the red blood cell, and eight in the air. So what's gonna happen is the oxygen is high concentration here, low concentration here. So this is gonna keep going down the concentration gradient until there is equilibrium. So I will have one, two, three, four going here and four here. So these two are in equilibrium, but watch what that did here. I don't have equilibrium anymore, I have concentration gradient. Okay, so this will try to keep coming in. Now one more thing happens here. The oxygen goes into the red blood cells. Now you guys know in our red blood cells we have the protein hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is written with the symbol HB. So once the oxygen goes into the red blood cell, it combines with the hemoglobin to make something called oxyhemoglobin, represented by HbO2, okay? So I will, oxyhemoglobin is not oxygen. So now I cannot represent them with white buttons. I'm going to use these dark green buttons. So I have four oxygen here, the oxygen, and the oxyhemoglobin are going to be in equilibrium. So I will replace two of my oxygen with two oxyhemoglobin, okay? So these two are now in equilibrium, but this oxygen and this oxygen is not in equilibrium. This oxygen and this oxygen is not in equilibrium. So I have established concentration gradient in two places. So I'm going to have I have four here, I have eight here, so two more will go in. So these two are in equilibrium, but these two are still not in equilibrium. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have two, let's bring one more in. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, and now I have one, two, three, four, five. So if you can imagine, um, as oxygen comes in here, it will keep binding with the hemoglobin and making oxyhemoglobin. As the oxygen level drops here, more oxygen is going to come in here. And we don't really have one red blood cell. 
we have a whole bunch of red blood cells. And so a lot more oxygen can come in. Remember, when we did not have the red blood cell, we could only get eight over here, and we still had eight in the air. What having the hemoglobin did was it allowed me to maintain concentration gradient, and so it allowed me to take more oxygen into my blood. Okay, for us, we are warm-blooded organisms. We need to maintain our body temperature, and that costs a lot of energy. So we need to make a lot of ATP, and so we um, have to have a lot of oxygen into our blood, and that's why we have hemoglobin. So the role of hemoglobin in the blood is to maintain concentration gradient, is to prevent equilibrium of oxygen. And so I want you to relate to this to what you have learned about, uh, we have talked about um, anemia. If people don't have enough iron in their diet, then they can get something called iron deficiency anemia, in which case they don't make enough hemoglobin in their uh, red blood cells, or they don't have enough hemoglobin in their red blood cells, and so they cannot establish this concentration gradient as much. They don't get as much oxygen, so they can't make as much energy, and so they are tired. All right? So that shows you how hemoglobin helps maintain concentration gradient of oxygen.